it's looking at patterns on maps and seeing if any of those patterns are traceable through different periods of that from, from one century to another century through to the modern day. So if you, yeah. if you want to do what Mick calls retrospective map analysis, which are the maps that you would suggest people right. go for? The stand of maps that tend to be available everywhere, time map. and the award that goes with it, which is basically a list of who owns what. So you have yeah. to have those two together. Yeah. The second one is enclosure maps. This relates to a period when land was being enclosed into fields and field parcels. And you can normally get both the tide maps and enclosure maps at the local records office. Earliest Ordnance Survey map, which, which tends is... to be about 1820, the, the smaller yeah. scale yeah. ones. Yeah. By the time you get to about 1860, the Ordnance Survey producing, in fact, this type of map, which is a large scale map which shows a smaller area but a lot more detail. This is the first accurate map that shows all the buildings, all the paths, all the field boundaries and so on and you can actually take measurements from these because they're accurate. By the 16th century people are using maps to show what they own. The big landowners want to they A want to know what they've got. You know, this is a Renaissance period we're talking about this yeah. sudden um, comprehension that people have land and ownership of landscape even yes. and so it goes from you being very wealthy and just wanting a map to see how, how rich and powerful you are yes um, and how much land you've got to actually people starting to want to think about well how can we what can we do on this land <laughs>